Hey, good morning, everyone. Thought I'd share with you the photo equipment that I took with me on this trip to Alaska. I'm currently in the Anchorage and hotel room, just doing some final packing of items before I get on a plane and head off to Iliama, where I'll spend the week photographing bears throughout uh, southern Alaska. And uh, getting right to it, I'll show you what uh, I brought here. So this is the uh, backpack I brought, the Low Pro Pro Trekker. It's a good size bag. I think for me and probably most people trying to figure out which backpack to get, how big do I need, how heavy it's going to be is very difficult. And this is probably the third serious backpack I've owned throughout my uh, many years of doing photography. Um, this one... I picked out mainly because I needed to fit my 600 millimeter lens in there and I wanted to carry it with me with all the rest of my gear. On other trips, I've actually carried two backpacks, one separately for the 600 and then another backpack with everything else. Uh, this backpack, as you'll see here in a moment, uh, can hold pretty much everything and including the laptop. I was able to successfully carry it around and it fits in the luggage compartment uh, inside the airplane, which is a huge benefit. You don't have to check it. Uh, it's got a nice top part that comes off as well if you want to hold that separately while you're on the airplane. Again, this one's a low, low Pro Pro Trekker, I think SB550. So it's a decent sized bag. Has a lot of nice features. Uh, Probably one of the nicer ones I've owned just because it has a lot of areas to put stuff. Um, you can see there's all these kind of snap out and straps everywhere to put things on. Uh, expandable pockets on the side and even more little clips that you can hold stuff onto if you have to. You can see I have the hand sanitizer in there, a muster in the COVID epidemic. <laughs> this side also has more here. Uh, also has a nice little zipper pouch here which allows you to actually put a water bladder in and then have the thing out that way when you're going around you're able to just sip your water as you walk around and i think that's was a nice little extra feature and i can see that i'll probably be using that also has a very sturdy um flip this around here carrying system with big shoulder straps padded belt uh so you can put a lot of the weight onto your waist um, these bags can get pretty heavy. This one, after I had it loaded, was 36 pounds, and I, again, was successfully able to carry it around without too much difficulty through the airport. So I think that um, says a lot. Now, again, I was showing you this little separate piece on the top. It kind of comes off. And you can actually take that whole thing off and just put items that you might want to get access to quickly if you're on the airplane and keep it with you in your seat. Or if you're on a big truck, you can put food and things in the top there and have it uh, ready to go. So let's see. Let's open this up. Let me lay this down. And I'll show you, uh, get right to it, what the lenses are that I have in it. Um, oh, yeah. First, uh, so the top part here will actually hold your laptop. So it has this little thing, slides off, and then this big pocket right here allows the laptop to kind of go in there and you can slide other things down in there as well. Um, you know, zipper this, I'll show you what I have in there and kind of the big view of it all here. And you can see I have two camera bodies, a uh, total of three lenses and teleconverters in there. And these are all big daddy lenses and a uh, big camera. So let's just start with my main camera it's going to be the Nikon D850. I've shot Nikon for many years. I've shot Canon before. Um, this one I have the uh, battery grip on the bottom as well. When you're shooting wildlife such as bears, you do tend to burn through a lot of pictures. I don't think I'm a person that takes as much as many but uh, <laughs> as others, but still you do a lot. And also this uh, battery grip ups the uh, frame rate that you can take to 9 frames per second with the D850. It has a pretty decent buffer, certainly not as fast as like the D5s or D6s. 
so at some point it does slow you down once you start shooting a lot but i've used it in the past i don't use it as much anymore because most of my shoots when i'm doing landscapes i'm using the uh the nikon z7 which i have decided to take as my backup body here and we'll also ride on the second lens for quick shooting uh, things that are closer up um, this camera also can shoot pretty fast. I think it's around 9 frames per second as well, but you know, it is an EVF. Sometimes they're not as quick when you push the button to start uh, shooting and the autofocus on um, these mirrorless cameras is always on the sensor, whereas on the 850 it's off sensor focusing. So the computer controls the focusing while your sensor is doing its own focusing through another computer whereas these everything takes place on the sensor itself and that's pretty common with all the mirrorless now there's some advantage to that of course because you can get a lot of fancy uh, programs in there such as eye detection animal detection face detection etc because all the focusing is happening on the sensor feeds in the computer and you can kind of try to figure out what you're looking at but in real world experience i can tell you that generally DLSRs are a little more accurate and faster, I guess mainly because on the mirrorless they have to think about it some more what they're looking at before they start jumping and shooting. But once they get going, they're very fast. I think some of these mirrorless shoot up something like 20 frames per second. Uh, but again, there's always a little bit of lag once you start shooting. And sometimes when you're shooting animals or sports and things are moving around, you want it right then and there. I was uh, out yesterday trying to do puffins, and uh, man, those things are tough, especially coming off the water in a moving boat. Um, camera like this would just really struggle to pick up the focus and follow it. You'll have a better chance with this one, and I'm not saying it does great either, but it's um, it can be very challenging. Any event, so the two bodies I took were the 850 and the Z7. I also have a D500, which I left at home, there was a toss-up whether I was going to take the 7 or the 500, but I used the 7 so much I'm familiar with it. And uh, the other thing I have found shooting wildlife is I like to crop, the ability to crop, so I shoot with these larger megapixel sensors. And even if I'm a little bit farther away than I want, I can still kind of bring it in. And I think that's a, a can be a big help and an advantage. Some of the faster cameras, like a D500, or if you go with a D5 or the new D6, are smaller megapixel cameras or less megapixel cameras are still full frame um, and there's some advantages to them because they're very fast uh, frame rates and you don't miss as many pictures but um, you, if you do a big 100% crop on those you're not you're probably just going to have about two or three megapixels left of your picture because they were 20 and uh, if you can fill the frame with them you're great you're fine and I, and I think that they work great and I use I still think the D500 that I have is a fantastic camera and one of my favorites. But anyhow, that's my take on them, and uh, that's the reason I brought these two bodies with me in this situation. So, the next lens, actually, which I'll use just for wider angle shots here, is the um, uh, this one goes on the on the Nikon Z. So this is the 24 to 70 that I brought with me, and uh, it's very compact, very small. Um, I actually used it quite a bit yesterday. I had it mounted on the Z7 and was just shooting some oh, scenery as we were going on on the boat uh, through Resurrection Bay yesterday. And I got some good shots and just sometimes I'll shoot some video with it and things. And uh, it's it's very nice. Uh, it kind of zooms in and out as you can see here. And uh, let me see here. When you have it uh, zoomed all the way in, it's a really about that small, just can fit in the palm of your hand. And now the two workhorses, and I only brought two really big workhorses with me um, before I get to the big one. This is the uh, Nikon uh, uh, 80 to 400 lens. Uh, again, I'm going over here. <clears throat> it's a nice lens. I used it uh, mostly yesterday. Out on the water, I kept this attached to the D850 and was able to shoot a lot of the wildlife on the water. Um, it's nice to have a zoom lens. Um, I, I think it does a good job. Is it as sharp as the 600 f4? No. Is it as sharp I, as, say, the 70 to 200 f2.8? No. Um, 
its aperture range is 4.5 to 5.6, which is pretty good for a, a zoom lens. It's big. It's a bigger lens. It's not small. It's, it's pretty heavy, and you know you compare it to the little little tiny lens here, the 24 to 70, and you can see, you know, there's quite a difference. It weighs probably four times as much too. And the question is, um, how much use will I get out of a shooting bears? I'm not sure. I expect it'll be small or very little. Um, I'll keep it attached to the Z7. I have the converter to do that because this is a F-series lens and the Z7 uses its FE lenses. So, But uh, if I need to shoot something closer up right away, I'll just have it slung over my neck and away we go. But anyway, that's the uh, be my second secondary lens. Um, the main lens that I'll use and in, in my experience with it is the 600 f4 i've owned this lens for many years now um, this is the newer version of it and i think i got it right when it came out so this thing i believe it or not, I, I was thinking about it. i think this thing is probably 10 years old maybe maybe not even but it's quite possible um i have a i uh, converted the foot on the tripod collar to the really right stuff one I just like it because I already you don't have to put anything on it just goes right on and it works out great um, believe it or not the bigger the prior versions were heavier and longer they've shortened them up this version I have this neoprene coating all over it which helps uh, take a beating I remember last time I was kind of traveling around if I'm holding it carrying it around in the field it seems like the outside's always bumping things and all that um, set it up for you here so you can kind of see so if you, if you compare this to the 24 to 70 I think you get an idea of what you're looking at I usually do keep the strap on this one uh, because it's heavy enough if you have a camera on it usually you carry it with this strap otherwise I would take it off I'll show you the tripod in a minute the hell it goes on but um, so what a size difference huh and now you can see why I need the bigger bag to carry it I think this thing's something like 15 or 17 inches long so it's a pretty good size um, the other things I have in there, of course, this is the FTZ converter for the Nikon Z. So you put this on the Z, and then you can hook really any of these lenses on it. Um, this is a 1.4 uh, teleconverter I brought. Whether I use it or not, who knows? I can hook this on to the 600, get even more length out of it, so I may do that. Unlikely I would put it on the zoom lens, but it's there just in case. Here's a little wireless remote trigger release. I've used this thing for ages and it keeps working, so I'm not, I'm not gonna get rid of it. Um, I only have one camera strap right here. This one has got the quick connects, so it can connect into the camera bodies very fast. You can kind of see the little connectors on there. Some of you have this strap. It works out really, really well. In the other pockets, of course, I keep an extra foot for my tripod. Lens cloth, lens cloth, lens cloth, one little wrench, some more memory cards. Um, also hidden in this, in this little compartment is I have a little really right stuff. Screwdriver set, you screw this open and it contains all, all kinds of Allen wrenches in there. So if your tripod head got loose or your foot got loose on it or anything, on your camera you can usually fix it with this thing i have a small little pliers too that i keep in here as well but i usually keep that in my check on bag because sometimes they're weird about it but anyway there's that the accessories that were also in the bag at the time were the laptop this is a macbook pro 13 inch this is a one terabyte drive this company makes some really fast reasonably priced um, solid state drives um, model USB-C because everything on here is, is USB-C. There's a card reader, output devices that for some reason I want to plug in um, HDMI into this and, or a regular USB or another USB-C. I can do it. Uh, battery charger, you better have one of those. There's the battery charger for the GoPro. Some headphones. This actually is the L bracket that goes on the 850 which I don't have on right now. This is my uh, GoPro Hero 8. The newest version. I use it quite a bit. 
Uh, very quick wide angle shots, take little movie shots. I can do uh, time lapse very easily and nicely. Um, there's the hood, believe it or not, this giant thing that goes on the 600 millimeter. There's the water blower that goes into the backpack. And then I have the um, USB C cable with a nice uh, 40 watt charger that can charge the laptop. You can charge the GoPro with it. Um, you can hook a regular USB and charge your phone with it. So it's it's a nice little device, a little more modern. Um, the tripod I got with me, I have two tripods I use pretty regularly. This is my main my tripod. Right now I got it hooked up with the uh, gimbal configuration. Um, and that just hooks right onto the ball head, as you see here. So I can quickly go ball head or on the gimbal. Um, sometimes when you're shooting bears and you're moving all around, you keep a you want to keep these big lenses balanced on the gimbal and just makes it a little easier to move around quickly. It's got some big carbon fiber legs. Now, believe it or not, this tripod is um, over 10 years old. It's been around the world. The legs still look brand new. For whatever reason, uh, I'm going to say really right stuff does a good job with their carbon fiber. I've climbed rocks with it. In fact, you can see a little bit of dings on it from where I've laid it on rocks and pushed off on it. For some reason, the carbon fiber does not get beat up. Go figure. You can change the feet, which I have before, to uh, grippers for on when you're on ice instead of the rubber. Um, I have a set of that as well. It's really built well, and the downside is a little heavy. And you put that in your check-on luggage, and it does add a good bit of weight. So you're going to be taking some less clothes with you, that's for sure. Um, of course, uh, besides the bag, you want to bring a, a hat with you, preferably rim, especially in Alaska because it rains a lot. That way the water's not dripping all over you. And uh, you may have seen over here I had some rain covers for the lenses, which I rarely use, but I'll throw them in there just in case. Generally, the 600 F4 is pretty well weather sealed, so is the 850. I don't worry too much about it. I had the 850 with the uh, with this 80 to 400 out in the misty rain yesterday, and it did just fine. I didn't have any issues or anything like that. Um, so I don't know how much I'll use it. But anyway, thought I'd give you all a little tour of the uh, camera bag, and now I'll put it all back together and get it ready to go. In about two hours, I'll be on a small plane heading down to Iliama. Take care, everyone.